All right, welcome to our next unit. So um, this unit is all about something called equilibrium, um, and it's really going to happen in two parts. Um, today we're going to talk about translational equilibrium, and then the next lesson we're going to focus on something called rotational equilibrium. So um, if an object, uh, imagine you've got an object here suspended by a rope hanging from the, the ceiling, say, um, what is the net force acting on the rope? Well, you can imagine that we would have a force of gravity pulling down, and then uh, tension force uh, pulling upwards. But since it's just hanging there, the net force in this case would be zero. Uh, similarly, imagine we've got another object here. Uh, this object, this 20 kilogram object, is now being lifted up at a velocity of 4.9 meters per second. Well, there's the same force of gravity pulling downwards. And um, note that um, even though there's a velocity upwards, uh, the velocity is constant. And so it's not accelerating upwards. And so whatever applied force is lifting it upwards would be still equal to gravity. So again, the net force is going to equal zero. Now in both of these cases, uh, the net forces are uh, uh, zero on the objects. And so they're in a form of what we call equilibrium. Now it's not to say that they're not moving, but they're not accelerating. And so the stationary object is said to, said to be in static equilibrium. And the moving object, so long as it's moving in a straight line at a constant velocity, is in dynamic equilibrium. Now both of these examples, both the hanging object and the object that's moving in a straight line, are examples of translational equilibrium. Now you might remember from math class the idea of um, a translation or to translate something. Um, in math this just means to move it side to side or up and down. And so translational motion or translational equilibrium refers to an equilibrium that's happening in the x and the y direction. So the condition for uh, translational equilibrium is essentially the sum of all forces has to be zero. Now since forces are vectors, um, we know that this means that the x and y directions are independent. So we know that both the sum of all x forces must be zero and the sum of all y forces must be zero. Basically, there's no net force side to side. There's no net force up and down. And these are our first two conditions for um, something to be in equilibrium. Like I said, next class, we'll take a look at um, the third condition. So for now, um, we've got an, a sign suspended using ropes shown in the diagram here. And the tension T1 is equal to 100 newtons. So the tension here pulling on this rope is 100 newtons of force. And the question is, what is the weight of the sign? Now, um, the strategies, uh, I've got the strategies here laid out that we want to use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a point in the system that is in equilibrium and all forces acting on it. Um, in this case, we're going to use um, the spot where the ropes meet. So I'm going to choose this point right here, and I'm going to think of all the forces in this system acting on that single point. Um, the next step here is to draw a free body diagram. And so, for example, I would have a weight of the sign pulling down on this point. I would also have a tension in this other line pulling up to the side here, and we're calling that T2. The next step is to break the forces into components. Now, um, breaking into components just means I'm going to see how much of these forces uh, work in the X and Y directions. And then um, the last step is to use the equilibrium conditions. These equilibrium conditions right here that I just looked at before. So um, let's imagine what this looks like. Um, if I was to break uh, T2, for example, this tension force, if I was to break it into X and Y components, I could see that there's a force to the side. I'm going to see how far I need to go in the X direction before I could just turn directly upwards and head in the y direction. And so I could label this component as T2x, and I could call this T2y. I could do the same thing here with my um, T1. I could say, how far can I go to the side here before I have to turn upwards? And I could have a T1x component and a T2 
uh, one Y component. Now the first thing you might notice here is that um, when this sign is being suspended, it, the, what's pulling up on the sign is the two Y components of the tension. The X components of the tension don't help support the weight of the sign at all because the weight of the sign is entirely in the Y direction. Okay, I'm just gonna, um, oh, I'm just also gonna point out here while we're here is notice that um, this angle here makes a 55 degree angle. And so um, using my uh, alternate interior rules, this angle here is also 55 degrees. And similarly, this is a 25 degree angle. And so this angle here is 25 degrees. Okay, I'm just going to uh, redraw the, the diagram here so I can get a nice clear picture because we're going to have to do some trig. Um, and so I've got T1. So there's T1. And I've got T1X and T1Y. And remember, this is 50. This is 55 degrees. And this is 100 newtons. Similarly, I've got T2, and I break that down to T2X and T, T2Y, and here I've got 25 degrees. Okay, so I, can't, I don't really know anything about T2 other than the angle, but you can see here that I could figure out the components of T1 because I know this angle and I know this, um, I know this side right here, my hypotenuse. So I could solve for T1x. T1x is just going to equal T1 times the cosine of 55 degrees. So 100 times the cosine of 55 degrees is um, 57.36 Newton. T2, uh, sorry, T1y is going to equal T1 times the sine of 55 degrees. And so that is going to equal 81.92 newtons. All right. Well, let's take a little comparison here. Remember what I said before was the sum of all the forces in the x and the y directions both have to cancel out. So, for example, I know that this x component of T1 has to be equal and opposite to that x component of T2. Put another way, the sum of all x forces, which would be equal to this force to the right, T2x, minus this force to the left, T1x, must equal 0. Uh, solving for T2x, I can see that this, they must just be equal and opposite. And so T2x must also be 57.36 newtons, but in this case to the right. Well, if I know that T2x is also 57.36 newtons, and I know this angle is 25 degrees, then I could use that, for example, to solve for T2y. So let's do that. Um, the tan of 25 degrees is going to equal T2y over T2x. So T2y is just T2x times the tan of 25 degrees which ends up being 26.75 newtons. Now it's worth taking, a, taking stock here for a second and just asking ourselves, what the heck were we trying to find anyways? You'll remember the original question was actually asking us, what is the weight of the sign? So really what we're trying to figure out is Fg. Well, this is where I can bring in my second condition of equilibrium, which says that the sum of all y forces also has to add up to zero. Now, I've got two up forces. I've got T1y and T2y. And then I've got one down force, which is my force of gravity, my weight. And those two things all have to cancel out to zero. Put another way, Fg must just be equal to the sum of T1y and T2y. Basically, all of the up forces uh, have to cancel out that single down force. And so T1y is 81.92. T2y is 26.75, and when I sum those up, I get approximately 109 newtons. Okay, so that's strategy one. And strategy one, again, as a reminder, is components. We um, take, find all our forces, break them down into x and y components, and then set all the x components equal to zero, and all the y components equal to zero, and then we solve from there. The uh, second strategy 
is uh, using something called a closed vector diagram. And this is gonna rely on a little bit more trig. So since we know that the net forces all have to add up to zero at any point in equilibrium, what would happen if you just added all the vectors together, even though they're in two dimensions? Well, they would add up to zero. And so what does that look like when we add forces? Um, even though they're in two dimensions, and even though we might not get a right angle triangle out of this, we are gonna be able to use sine law, cosine law, or whatever else we can use to, uh, to solve the triangle. The key here is to never assume that it is a right angle triangle unless you can prove it um, geometrically and so that you're certain. All right, so here's a similar problem, but we're just gonna solve this a different way. So in this case, a 64 Newton object is suspended using ropes as shown in the diagram. So in this case, what they've told us, they've told us the weight of the object pulling down. The FG is 64 Newtons. Similar to the last problem, I've got two tensions here. I've got a tension in this rope here, which I'll call T1, and I've got a tension in this rope here, which I'll call T2. And so if I'm gonna do this, uh, this trig method or this closed vector diagram method, I'm just gonna add all these forces together. So I'm gonna draw, here's FG, FG is straight down. And then I'm gonna to add to that T1. So where this finishes off, I'm gonna to add to this T1. And then where T1 finishes off, I'm gonna to add to that T2. And what we should find, if all my forces add up to zero, then I should end up right back where I started. Basically, all these forces add up to nothing overall. And remember, we know that this is 64 newtons. Now, the trick with doing this method is we have to be able to um, rationalize what, uh, we have to be able to figure out essentially what, what some of our angles are. And what's helpful to do here in this case is to think about um, some um, horizontal and vertical lines that we know for sure. Uh, for example, um, this line right here, the ceiling for T1 was kind of like right here. So I'm just gonna draw a little dotted line. I know the angle between T1 and the ceiling was 35 degrees. So this must be 35 degrees right there. Um, I guess I also know if this is 35 degrees that this must be 35 degrees. Um, I know that gravity pulls straight down. So this is a 90 degree angle. And if this is 90 and this is 35 degrees, then this angle here must be 55 degrees. Uh, looking over here at this other angle here, this, this um, T2 makes an angle of 50 degrees with the roof. So this angle up at the top is 50 degrees. And if I use my little Z rule here, I see that this angle here is also 50 degrees, which means this whole overall angle must be 80 degrees. And so then I know that this last angle here, if I, uh, since all the angles add up to 180, this angle here must be 40 degrees. So um, it's really important to go through the steps and, and just make sure you prove um, these angles using geometry so that you're certain about uh, what they are. Um, <clears throat> okay, now at this point, we've got one side of our triangle. We've got all the angles. And so at this point, we could use sine law to find the other sides. For example, I could use, uh, to find T1, I would just use T1, you can see T1 is opposite the uh, 40 degree angle. So I could say T1 over the sine of 40 degrees must equal um, FG over the sine of 85 degrees. And solving for T1, that's gonna equal FG sine 40 over sine of 85, which works out to be right around 41 Newtons. Uh, I can do a similar thing for T2. So uh, T2 divided by, you can see T2 is opposite the 55 degree angle. So T2 over sine 55 is going to equal FG over sine of 85. And so T2 is going to equal uh, FG sine of 55 over sine of 85, which works out to be 53 Newtons. So the key thing to remember here is you can use either method. Um, either method is totally fine. There are some problems where one method or the other will be easier. And so if you ever get stuck doing it one way, you might consider just kind of stopping, backtracking, and, and doing it the other. So just as a comparison, let's just, I'm just gonna do this problem here. I'm gonna do it both ways, just to sort of, just sort of as a review so we can see what both ways looks like. In either case, I, I really need to diagram all my forces uh, right off the bat. So I've got an object suspended. The tension here in T2 is 
50 newtons. And so I've got Fg pulling down, which is unknown. I've got T1 in this case pulling to the, to the left, uh, T2 pulling this way at an angle, and I can see that T2 is 50 newtons. If I was going to do the, uh, the component method, Well, what I would do is I would simply break T2 down into its components. You'll note that I only need to break T2 into components this time around because T1 is really all in the X direction and FG is really all in the Y direction. So there's no X and Y components to, um, to break those into. Uh, here's a 37 degree angle. And so T2Y is just going to equal T2 times the sine of 37 degrees, which is 30.5. 1 newtons. Now we're trying to find the weight of the sine. I could find T2x but I'm not going to bother because I know that in this case the only y force that's balancing off gravity is T2y. You can see that T1 isn't providing any y force at all. So the sum of the y forces would just equal T2y minus fg which equals 0. And essentially fg is just going to equal T2y which is 30.1 newtons. So just by comparison, let's, let's see what that would look like if I did the uh, trig method. And so if I did the trig method, remember what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add up all of the forces. And remember when you're doing it vector addition, it doesn't really matter which um, order you add the forces in. So I'm going to start with T2. So there's T2. And then I'm going to add to that FG. And then I'm going to add to that T1. And I know that T1 makes a right angle here with the wall, so I know that this is a right angle. I also know that T2 makes an angle of 37 degrees with the horizontal. And so you can see from this picture right here, since I know that T2 is 50 newtons, I can solve for FG just by saying that um, the sine of 37 degrees will equal FG over T2, or FG equals T2 sine 37, which gives me 30.1 newtons, which is the exact same as the other way. All right, that's it for the lesson.